Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today, as you can see, we are starting off with a completely fresh face. And the reason for that being, I have here one of the newest releases by Etouse. This is their Face Edition Skin Base for Oily Skin. This is the newest addition to their newly revamped Face Edition line of face products. So um, yeah, the fact that this is specially formulated for oily skin, which I do have, I wouldn't say my skin is overly oily but I definitely have some problem areas particularly in the t-zone that get very oily and shiny throughout the day that didn't happen so much when I was younger but I guess when I hit my late 20s somewhere down the line my skin started to change a little bit and become more combination oily so this has the same style of minimalist baby pink packaging as their face powder has which I've almost used up all of well I still have a ways to go but it's definitely on its last leg. I had a pretty good experience with this powder so far. I'm really glad I picked it up. I mean, usually it's obvious when I've taken an actual liking to a face powder because we definitely wouldn't be seeing this much pan if I didn't. I'm the type of person that not only am I really, really picky about powders, I tend to offload them really quickly once I realize that they just don't work for my skin or they're not my preference. So you may be aware of this already, especially if you are an avid follower of Japanese and Asian makeup trends, but Etouse as a brand has been really doing a big revamp and redesigning of their whole image and I guess brand or company philosophy over the past year or so, particularly with regards to their colored cosmetics line. They've released several new lines of lipsticks, eyeshadows, eyeliners, things like that over the past year, and they call them additions now, right? So for their eye products, they call it the eye edition. Lip products are lip edition. This skin base and this powder would obviously belong to the face edition so on and so forth, you get the idea. Prior to this renewal over the past year, and a very successful one at that, might I add, Etouse was primarily only known for their skin enhancing products. Of course, they've always maintained a regular offering of colored cosmetics, um, even before this relaunch, but nobody was really checking for their makeup like that in the past, at least not from what I can recollect. Actually, for me personally, the first and last Etouse product that I tried out before I tried their face powder, it was this little cylindrical looking blush compact where there was like a removable sponge on the bottom. They came out with a limited edition cat design variation of that, so you know I had to go out and buy it. That blush is no longer in my collection, unfortunately, because it did turn out to be quite lackluster. It was not a pleasant finish, on me at least. It looked very chalky and yeah, it was just not a good product. I definitely remember reviewing that exact blush on my channel though. If I can find the video, I'll link it. So considering that underwhelming experience that I've had with their makeup in the past and compared to now, I think it's safe to say that they came a really long way and that their um, newest renewal, relaunch, whatever you want to call it, of the brand is a pretty huge success. It seems like it's hitting all the right notes with regards to everything from the design and the formulas, even the color stories. They've always been like kind of minimalist, you know, focusing on bringing out the best qualities of your own skin as opposed to trying to cover everything up with as much makeup as possible. But I think even more so now, they've really leaned into the minimalist, you know, fresh, natural looking makeup. In that respect, I think they really have managed to carve out their own lane in the Japanese drugstore beauty landscape. It's quite impressive in my opinion. Not many brands can recreate and update themselves like that in a successful way that resonates with the new, the ever evolving Japanese drugstore makeup consumer. So yeah, I think Etouse has really stepped up and successfully filled that niche of like the fresh, barely there, natural looking makeup aesthetic in the Japanese drugstore. Because you know you have the old school Gyaru brand and then you have like the Neo Gyaru, cutesy Gyaru brands. There's also the just the regular cute young girl brands, the no frills, super budget brands. What else am I missing? Something? Oh, the newer Japanese brands that are taking a page out of K-Beauty, those have their own lane as well. So I love that even with all this other long-established competition on the market, Etouse is still managing to give me something new. Just one more point before I get into application. I know you're probably sick of me talking right now. This is actually a very important one, so listen carefully. You don't want to miss this. Etouse happens to be Java approved when it comes to their cruelty-free status. Yes, we love to see it. Now, you see they have a half-shaded leaf mark there. That means that their brand is not quite 
it's not completely vegan. It has a portion of their offerings are vegan, meaning that they have no animal products in the ingredients or the manufacturing process, nothing like that. But some of them might have animal products in them. So that's kind of a bummer. But it's also, to be honest with you, flipping through the rest of this booklet, the Japanese cosmetics brands and manufacturers that have managed to earn a fully vegan mark are few and far between. So no surprise there, the cosmetics industry obviously still has a long way to go, especially on a global scale when it comes to animal abuse, animal rights issues. But isn't it great to know that at least this brand is definitively cruelty-free in that it does not test on animals whatsoever during their cosmetics creation process. I think that's amazing, so I get to use this with a clean conscience. All right, now let's get into the application. So the instructions say that I should give this a good shake. And then it says here, this is interesting, it says that if you use too little of the product, you might not be able to experience the full benefits or effects. So I'm going to take that to mean, don't be afraid to apply liberally. Okay, so I'm taking my little RMK foundation brush and I'm going to apply this to half my face. Let's do the left side of my face, also known as the best side of my face. All right, so you see it's a pretty opaque looking light pink baby pink liquid oh my god you know what this reminds me of what's that medicine that we all had to drink when we were kids when we had a cold or something is it pepto-bismol i feel like it's pepto-bismol it tasted like it was probably supposed to taste like candy or something but it definitely did not i feel like it tasted kind of gross but i also low-key enjoyed it because kids enjoy gross tasting things sometimes all right, I don't know if you can see the difference. This is obviously supposed to be a lightweight, non-tinted formula, so it's supposed to completely sink into the skin and all of that, but I can tell you right now that this side of my face definitely feels smoother than this side. Okay, so I just added a second layer, actually, and this time I used my fingers to massage it into my face just to make sure that it wasn't getting sucked into my brush or something because it seemed like it seeped into my skin pretty instantaneously on the first layer but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just my brush absorbing half of the product so I'm here to report to you that it actually doesn't have anything to do with the brush I mean I wouldn't use this with a sponge because I think that's just the nature of sponges they are going to soak up most of your product but as far as application goes this really did seep into my skin so effortlessly and comfortably. It's almost like the minute it hit my skin, my skin just sucked it in, drank it up, you know? Yeah, that feels really good actually. It doesn't feel like there's anything on my face. It just feels like a slight mattifying effect, but not to the point where it's dry. It just feels like it targeted only the oily areas and it restored them to a more balanced moisture content or whatever. I'm always very nervous to film any type of like skincare or even foundation related video. Anything where it's just really not easy to show through the camera how something is performing. I mean that's why there's pretty much no skincare reviews whatsoever on my channel. I've mentioned like toning lotions and things that I've been using in passing in my videos but I've never done a dedicated review on any type of skincare or cleanser or anything like that just because I feel anxiety about like how difficult it is to show the effects of those products visually. I might feel great in person, my skin might feel great and hydrated, but how would you really be able to gauge that through the camera? You know what I mean? Especially since I am not well versed at all when it comes to lighting and just camera settings, but I am doing my best to branch out and try out on camera more and more, I call it invisible effect products such as skincare or cleansing balms or things like that because those products really are like such an integral part of everyone's makeup routine. Even more so now because of how masks have changed our makeup habits. Anyway, let me just do my eye makeup and we can catch up later. So I finished the rest of my makeup sans foundation, just without foundation. I actually used the Etuse Eye Edition palette in number three just to keep the Etuse theme going. This is probably my favorite packaging out of all the drugstore eyeshadows that are out right now. It's just so minimalist and sleek. I love it. I love how the outside cases are color-coordinated to the actual eyeshadow shades. Color coordinate with them. 
same shoes. I think that's a very modern, stylish touch. And the formula is great too, of course. You've seen me use this before. You don't need me to go into a whole spiel about it. Aside from eyes and lips, I added just a light contour as well as a tiny bit of highlight. I cannot tell which half of my face has the oily skin base on and which one doesn't just purely by looking in the mirror. Now, when I feel up on both sides of my face, then yes, I can tell, because this one is definitely has a smoother feel to it than my right side, which is bare skin for the most part. Um, um, yeah, see, this is what I was worried about. You really can't tell visually, and it just comes down to you having to take my word for it that my left side feels more mattified. Obviously, I'm striving to be as truthful and as detailed as possible in every video that I put out for you guys, but I would prefer to have some sort of visual or concrete proof to show you. The only place that you can kind of see it is in the crevices of my nose here. This one you can see like ever so slightly there's a pink film of product on there. It's very skincare like the way that it just absorbed so easily and quickly. I mean that's a good thing ultimately right for a skin base or a primer. The point of it is to look and feel as invisible as possible while still giving you the benefits. And if I were to compare it to something that I already have in my collection, you might have seen this one coming, but this is actually giving me very, very similar vibes to the Prima Vista Long Keep Base UV. So let me just do a little comparison for you right now, actually. Yeah, so this is the Etuse. This one is the Prima Vista. Similar in color, similar in smell even. It's like that fresh, generic cosmetic smell. The Prima Vista is a slightly runnier formula, as you can see, while the Etuse is a little bit thicker. And I actually think that this consistency is just a hair better than the Prima Vista one. This one, it feels like I have to spread it out quite a bit and wait a little bit before it dries down, whereas the Etuse, I mean, I've said this over and over again, but it absorbs into the skin pretty instantaneously. They're both nice, but as far as comfort goes, I might have to give Etuse the award here. And the Etuse has 30 milliliters of product at an 1800 yen plus tax price point, while the Prima Vista is nearly 3000 yen for 25 milliliters of product. So there's actually 5 milliliters more in this Etuse tube right here. Alright, we are on day two of the Etuse Skin Base for Oily Skin. This time, I'm going to apply together with foundation on top, see if we can get more visible results that way. So, same deal really, we're only applying to the left side, the best side of my face. Which side of your face do you guys like better? Are you like me, left side is best side, or are you like, right side is the right side? While we let that dry and sit, I'm going to go ahead and apply to the right side of my face, my Kogendo aqua foundation. This one needs a bit of shaking too. And I'm going to use a different brush actually for each side of my face. So this will be the right side because this one doesn't have any of the um, primer mixed into it. And now let's go ahead and finish up the left side with foundation. And here's my finished face of foundation. What do we think? Notice anything different yet? I feel like this side might be slightly, ever so slightly plumper, and this side is a tiny bit dull. Okay, so here's my finished face. Mmm, I really like the way my makeup turned out today. I know it's not really different from anything that I usually do. My usual peachy monotone deal, but you know, I'm wearing my new Mersey Blur Lip Tint in Odd MLBB. I mean, can you really see a difference between the two halves of my face? I honestly can't, but it's not over yet, so I will check in with you guys later tonight. I'm gonna head out in a little bit. It's still early morning here. It just turned 9 a.m. I have to go into central Tokyo for a meeting today, but I'll be back like... I don't know, maybe 5 p.m.-ish, and we'll do a final check-in then. I'm also debating, maybe I should do this test on my hands as well, like on the backs of my hands. So I'll put the foundation plus the primer on my left hand and then just the foundation on my right hand. Does that sound like a viable control test for you guys? Because 
I feel like it just it shows up better on my hands for some reason maybe because my hands are not the same shade as my face you can see the actual color of both the base and the foundation let's just go ahead and do it um, I hope the person that I'm meeting with doesn't think I'm crazy or it just doesn't look at my hand area you don't shake hands in Japan anyway as a greeting so that part is not an issue well nobody should be shaking hands anywhere in the world if you really think about it in this current era let me go ahead and apply the products to my hands and I will catch up with you guys in a couple of hours So I am back at home now after my little excursion into the city for the day. It is around 5 p.m. right now, which means that we are on my eighth hour of wear, pretty much, with all of the products you see here on my face. Of course, today we're mostly just interested in the state of my foundation and how it's held up through these eight hours. So let me get up close and personal with you guys. Actually, let me just zoom you in. By the way, if you hear noise in the background, that's my washing machine running. I'm sorry about that. I totally forgot that I had to film an update for this video, but hopefully it's not too distracting. So yeah, let's take a close look at my face. We're getting really, really up close and personal now. Um, do you see any noticeable difference? I'm going to be very honest and say that if I didn't know beforehand, obviously, that I was going to test half a face that was primed with the skin base versus half my face that is not. I'm gonna say there certainly looks to be no difference whatsoever at first glance, certainly not to a stranger or just a passerby on the street. Now, this could all very well be a testament to the fact that the Kogendo Aqua Foundation really is just that great, that it doesn't need a primer to enhance it all that much, which I honestly do think is the case. I think that has a lot to do with why my face looks so even right now. However, that being said, again, I don't think it's that discernible through the camera lens, which is unfortunate, but I will say that the right side of my face, the only foundation side. I'll say it looks maybe about 5 to 10%, a little more worn down, you know, a little more rough and tumble than the left side of my face. Even though I really do think that most of it is just the greatness of the Kogendo foundation speaking for itself. I mean, to have this level of like minimal oiliness and splotchiness at the end of an eight hour day where I've been out and about, you know, I've been eating hot meals, I've been sweating, getting in and out of buildings. I didn't make any touch ups or even blot my face with oil blotting wipes, nothing like that throughout the day. So for it to still hold up this well is a pretty good testament to the foundation itself. When I really, really got close to the mirror and inspected my face thoroughly, I do have to say that this side, the left side, does seem a little bit smoother and matter overall. So you can see, especially in this area, I think, where I have my blush swept on, it still looks relatively matte and blurred as compared to the right side, right? You see how it's a little more shiny on this side? Here, maybe it's easier if I turn my head. You see how the light is catching the natural oils and sweat buildup that has happened throughout the day on this side of my face? Not so much over here, right? Still pretty matte. You know, there's a slight glow from within element going on over here because I just naturally radiate such light and positivity, right? <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, there's that glow from within quality, but you don't see like the harsh light reflected off of any oils or such. And that right there, I think we can safely attest to the Etusei primer. So I'm going to show you some footage of my hands after eight hours now. This is the same time frame and everything. What's interesting here is that you can't really see a difference in the shine factor on my hands. That area on the body is not one prone to excessive oiliness or anything like that on most people. So I think that makes total sense that we don't see any difference in shininess on either hand. Where the primer's effects come into play though is the coloring. So if you'll notice, there's definitely more of a pinkish hue on my left hand than there is on my right hand. So what you're seeing on my right hand is obviously just my Kogan Do foundation match in its most pure representation, while on the left hand you see the combined effect of the pinkish Etuse skin base underneath the foundation color. Now honestly, I couldn't tell you which one looks better shade-wise even if you asked me. It's kind of a moot point anyway because it's not like the skin on the back of your hands matches the skin on your face. Basically, the main takeaways I think we can get out of this is number one from the 
face comparison, we saw clearly that the skin base was successful to a certain extent in alleviating some of the problems that come with wearing makeup on oily skin, absorbing the natural oils from your face and preventing them from contributing to a faster breakdown of your foundation throughout the day. And then the second takeaway that we can glean from the hands test, for this particular base, it does seem like the pink color factors a lot into it and that will aid you in just sort of like evening out and brightening your complexion, rounding out the overall opacity and coverage of your foundation. So all in all, I really did enjoy this primer, more so for the effects that it had on just the overall feeling of my skin throughout the day and like how effective it was at combating the natural oils on my face. Not so much for what it did for me complexion wise. I mean, again, I think I started off with a really great luminous looking foundation in the first place. So this would depend on what foundation you pair it with too. Perhaps if you were to apply this under a foundation that tends to oxidize or something, maybe that would, maybe the pink undertone would help offset that darkening in color as the day goes on. That being said, I don't think this is a necessity by any means. Get it if you like it, if you enjoy putting on a primer before foundation. If you already have a foundation that pretty much delivers like 90% of your needs already, why add an extra step, right? However, if you're someone like me who just wants that option for whenever you're in the mood to really go that extra mile to make your skin texture and complexion perfect, I think this would be a great addition to your arsenal. Also, if you enjoy makeup items like this where you can get skincare benefits as well, like it's not something that you apply purely for decoration, this might be of interest to you. And speaking of which, I feel like I'm also gravitating towards those kinds of products more and more, not just with regards to face or complexion products, but also like even a lot of cream eyeshadows and eyeliners and stuff that are coming out these days, a lot of brands are starting to put more and more emphasis on the health care and skincare benefits or what have you of their new items, of their new cosmetics items. Now, how much of that is actually truly beneficial and how much of that is just a sleek marketing tactic, you're gonna have to kind of make your own judgment call on that on a case-by-case -case basis. But all in all, I do think it's a good direction for these companies to be going into. Um, this is not really a new thing with Japanese and other Asian branded cosmetics, by the way. Like, since the beginning of time, I can remember even makeup that's pretty much universally regarded for only its decorational purposes, like liquid eyeliner, for example. I can remember since I first moved to Japan 10 years ago, they would always write all over the packaging how how this eyeliner formula is infused with this and that herb and some vitamin E or whatever. And I have yet to see any health miracle manifest in my body, you know, as a result of using um, Japanese eyeliners for the past decade. But that being said, I do think it's nice to know that at the very least, you're not doing like unnecessary harm to your face by being conscientious going forward about choosing makeup products that not only that not only give you the visual enhancements and effects that you're looking for, but they also work behind the scenes for you in some capacity, right? whether it's skincare or, you know, wrinkle prevention, I don't know, uh, eyelash growth serum infused mascaras. The possibilities are really endless. So that's one aspect of the makeup industry that I'll definitely be keeping my finger on the pulse for moving forward. And if I happen to come across something of significant interest or value, I'll do my best to report those findings to you. So, wow, this turned out to be a long one, you guys. I did not intend for this video to be this long. I don't know exactly how many minutes it's gonna end up being after I do my thing with the editing, but yeah, I think this is a good place to leave it for now. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!